listeners that can't see, Martin has currently got a background of crashing waves, swinging palm trees, all of that. So, yeah, where are you currently? I'm in my bedroom, but I just thought, given the context, it would be suitable to have a Caribbean background in honour of one of the funniest PR disasters I have ever seen. Mm. It's It's been a wonderful week, honestly. <laughs> Well, let, let's just give it the context, though, first of all. So for the people that might not have been listening to the, the news this week, um, Prince William and um, Kate went to Jamaica. I believe their trip was as part of honouring the Platinum Jubilee. I think a lot of people probably thought that the reason why they chose to visit Jamaica and sort of make an appearance there was after what happened in Barbados towards the end of last year, um, which is that they chose to um, elect their own president as sort of the head of state or acting governor, whatever you want to call it, as yeah. opposed to Queen Elizabeth, who is still the reigning um, general, I think it's colonial general, I think that's the term, um, mm-hmm. for Jamaica. However, when they went there, I... I think, first of all, I don't think they were necessarily met with as much um, praise and acceptance as they're expecting. And then I think the thing that everyone is talking about right now is that picture or the, those series of pictures which depict, I think, Kate Middleton's in the foreground, Prince William in the background. And they're basically, I don't know what they're doing, but they're meeting um some local people in Jamaica and immediately the first thing when I saw that is just thinking oh my gosh this is literally looks like they're at a zoo this this is what this this picture looks like and I just think that they will have gone into that thinking oh this is really we're gonna show people how we are and progressive and I think also in my opinion I think I I Obviously, this is speculation, but I do think maybe when Kate Middleton was reaching out her hand, she was thinking, oh, like Princess Diana, where you know when there was such a big thing in terms of yeah, her, yeah. Um, hugging the person, who um, the child who had AIDS. I think it was probably something along that line, but it has completely come out the wrong way. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the picture and this whole spectacle I think the optics of the picture are terrible, obviously. I think from a PR perspective, it's it's really bad. But I don't think the picture in of itself is kind of the central issue of what needs to be discussed. Mm. We all know how the picture looks. It's terrible optics. But from an objective point of view, if you're as famous as Will and Kate are, just being amongst the general public isn't really, you know, permissible. Even if they were in the UK doing a tour, I doubt they'd be in amongst a big crowd of people. So whilst the optics of the photo are terrible, I don't think um, if the royal family's relationship with former colonies was positive, then anyone would be making a fuss of the picture. Mm. I think the issue is that the picture is almost like it's evocative of like past images we've seen and really representative of the exploitative relationship that the royal family have with colonised nations. And for me, that's the issue. I just like to pick up um, also on something you said before about them expecting to be met with sort of more adulation and how the trip hasn't gone well. Whilst it's true, and I do think there is a certain pig-headedness of the royals and the lack of self-awareness about how people relate to them, it's not necessarily a new thing that Caribbean nations have had this response to them. I remember being around, how old have I been, about 15 or so when David Cameron um, was Prime Minister. There was a similar thing of him wanting to do a visit to Jamaica, the then um, heads of state saying that, yes, you're coming to discuss reparations, we don't want you to come, and the visit was cancelled. Across the loads of Caribbean nations, there's been a, a long-held understanding of the true nature of the relationship between the monarchy and their governments. It's just that I think post-BRM, the British mainstream media are almost more transparent about said um, relationships. So now, uh, a Guardian or a Times or whoever it may be isn't being quite so radical in highlighting the protest movements that happen when these visits happen. Whereas pre-2020, you'd kind of be alone in being the broadsheet to publish the reality of the visits. So mm-hmm. by no means is this the first time they've been received that way. Yeah, so essentially what you're saying is that the this has been happening for time in terms of this resistance. Yeah. It's just since BLM, okay. now it's actually 
it's permissible to shed light on it and not be viewed as some radical left wing. Yeah, view, now you're not viewpoint. basically now you're not taking a risk by reporting honestly on what's been happening for decades. It's not just decades, isn't it? As well, I mean, obviously the people of the Caribbean nations, it's there's a strong history there of re- revolt and rebellion in terms of. Um, the past um, when obviously these different countries were <clears throat> I'm going to say more strictly colonized because in some senses they are still colonized yeah yeah um, but obviously um, when slavery was around and when that was overthrown the way in which that was overthrown in a lot of places was by this element of resistance and revolt so it's nothing of new. course yeah do you think this is something of the beginning of the end for the monarchy, or do you think that they're going to be able to uh, pass this? I don't know. I think for me, my understanding of the monarchy or the point of the monarchy is that for the British public, they kind of act as a sort of symbol of jingoism that allows people to ignore their material realities. So what I mean by that is the sense of pride people have looking at the Queen and thinking about the empire gives people a sense of superiority for being about being British that isn't kind of mirrored by any of their lived circumstances. As the cost of living rises, as people are feeling squeezed financially with the fallout from getting a terrible Brexit deal, everything about living in Britain is now getting objectively worse. So in a sense, the function of the monarchy has never been more important than it is now. So in that regard, I feel as though there'd be a lot of pushback or a lot of resistance to any kind of cause for the UK becoming a republic. If you look at the political class of this country, you've seen stories about trying to mandate the national anthem in schools. There was a whole furore about MPs um, wanting the Union Jack to be president whenever they're on TV. The Guardian leaked a story, I think, last year about how a big part of Keir Starmer's strategy for the next general election would be focusing on, you know, British nationalism, getting the Union Jack in the background of every address he does. People are going to really, really double down on symbols of sort of jingoism and patriotism um, to almost act as a distraction from the fact that everything's getting much, much worse in a material context. So in that regard, I don't really see the monarchy going anywhere as much as I'd like them to. I was going to say that in a time where the cost of living crisis is obviously becoming more and more dire each day, the economic role that the monarchy plays probably should be used to the people's advantage. But then in reality, if it was ever going to be used to the people's advantage, then it would have been. And I don't think it's of course, yeah. used. So yeah, that's a bit of a moot point. But it's, then, not, it's not a moot point. It's just you're looking at it as a rational, reasonable person. And in that regard, you're in the wrong country, but that's not your fault. Well, maybe Maybe not the end of the monarchy then do you see this as the because obviously it happened in um barbados now that they've um rid of themselves of the association with um the uk and the queen yeah and jamaica obviously there's been light now shed on this it's become a lot more of a prominent issue in a sense that people are actually seeing it which makes it more likely that jamaica potentially would become its own um republic um separate to the uk in the future do you see that happening for the other countries that still remain effectively in control by the uk i think i think it sort of depends on the country's individual governments so with jamaica it's actually although the government are obviously pushing through removing the queen of head of state it's actually pressure from the opposition party that's forcing them to do that because it was part of their um, election manifesto um, they're now being pushed by the opposition party to kind of like back what they said. Um, in Barbados, you've got Prano Mason, who's sort of one of the subaltern world's leading socialist voices. So clearly someone who actually cares about their country wouldn't want a, a colonial relationship with the monarchy. The difficulty with Caribbean countries, and we have it with a lot of African countries as well, is that when the heads of government are people who can be bought, um that's what allows these relationships to continue so aid which never gets to the people being kind of funneled into the pockets of like governmental leaders is always going to be an obstacle to removing the monarchy so i don't necessarily think there'll be an entire caribbean trend or an entire west african trend i think it depends very heavily on who's in government at a said time like you say this has been happening for a while now and it's only just now that light's been shed on it it does make you slightly hopeful that the fact that people are actually seeing this and 
yeah seeing that it, it, it's embarrassing it is embarrassing what's happened like this especially considering that this whole trip was supposedly a way to sort of save face after what's happened in Barbados and mm. it just hasn't done that at all but I think in terms of the monarchy and its relationship with colonialism and um, that like continues to pervade to the present day I think it's similar to in my opinion what's happening with the Met Police so like like similar to the monarchy um this has been obviously the stuff with the Met Police has been going on for ages the police as itself as an institution is institutionally racist so it's set up to fail um but obviously things have been going on for ages in in terms of um the abhorrent way in which the Met Police have been operating in my opinion um it's only just now that some more more and more stuff is sort of coming to light and I think it is especially within the past say few years maybe it's because of COVID I don't know but it seems like week after week there is some major setback for the Met Police like mm. I remember the week before um Child Q um something something happened with regards to the Met Police and I remember thinking like oh like I wonder what's going to top it next week and then literally yeah. something did and I think this is similar to that way in the royals of their relationship with colonialism like we can look at how many or even the royals in general and the monarchy as a whole we can look at obviously what's happened over the past um couple of years if we focus on that with everything that's been going on with um prince andrew harry and Meghan, and this th this is sort of like a minor embarrassment compared to this other stuff yeah. in terms of the way that it's going to act as a setback for them but it does make you think like I keep on seeing that with the Met Police and I keep on thinking oh how many times are they going to suffer a setback before anything actually comes of it yeah. I think it's the same for this like how many times is the monarchy going to be exposed or embarrassed before anything comes of it it probably yeah won't. I think it's it's a really um really good analogy i think my difficulty is when you think about the scandals with the met police um you have to think about who they impact so as many horrible things might happen to young black people for example if we live in a country that on majority doesn't care about young black people there's nothing you could really do to that demographic that would shift mainstream opinion similarly um with sort of the monarchy and their relationship with like colonized nations you know, in 2020, we had the country literally arguing with itself about whether or not Black lives matter. Like, you know, the notion of whether or not an, an ethnic group of people have the right to live actually being a mainstream debate in a country, to me, really inhibits the possibility that a legacy of colonialism could ever be damning for the monarchy. Mm -hmm. I think, and at the same time as well, I don't necessarily think if the monarchy was to be disbanded in every post-colonial nation was to become a republic it would immediately remedy the legacy of colonialism i think it's much more of a financial discrepancy that needs to be addressed through reparations so yeah i agree with you i don't necessarily um think that there will be one you know scandal or one thing that will make people think oh we need to think about this because as you say it would have been prince andrew or it would be i don't know the legacy of the transatlantic slave trade or it would be Meghan Markle living here for three years and then having to move because she couldn't stand the tone of racism and any lack of support. You know, there's there's no kind of like final boss of, of nonsense that hasn't already happened. Um, yeah. So I think that's why we have to take the small victories of it just being really, really funny how bad certain trips go rather than necessarily hoping that it um, leads to something more revolutionary. I mean thinking about it now I'm thinking well what would it have been to have been a successful trip effect and all I can think of is it would have been a successful trip if they'd gone there and they'd managed to get some actual good photos that, that's the that's the only thing yeah. I can think of it being a successful trip because realistically like what what do they have to offer in terms of like that like unless they're prepared to offer complete reparations for everything that's happened in the past um, which obviously the monarchy acted as the head of state for, then I don't know. Yeah, from their point of view, I do wonder what the incentive was. Like, it clearly wasn't what happened. I'm sure whatever they wanted wasn't this. But yeah, I do wonder what was their imagined end goal. Maybe they thought there'd be some good photo opportunities. 
maybe I don't know it's what it shows is that you can colonize the entire world and steal all the wealth of the world but you can't buy self-awareness because otherwise this this would not have this journey would not have been undertaken I'm gonna take that I'm like gonna take that frame it that is absolutely, absolutely <laughs> cool 